G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. One of the things I'm most commonly asked about is straining up and knotting wire. One of my most popular videos has been how to tie the speed knot or Donald knot for straining plain wire. Today I'm going to go through not only how to tie the knot, but how to set up your strainers on the wire, how to strain the wire, and then finally how to finish it off with the knot. Before we get into today's video, it is very important to note you should always wear safety glasses when you're working with wire under tension. And in this case, I'm wearing safety glasses with a dust shield around the side that fit perfectly to my face because we want to avoid small bits of dirt or grit or steel getting in through the sides of the safety glasses as has happened to me in the past. So make sure your safety equipment's not only worn, but it's up to scratch. Now, obviously I've run out some wire for this job and I've tied it off to both end posts using a termination knot. Click on the link above if that was the knot you were after today. We're going to start from this position. Notice I've left a fair amount of slack in this wire. We want to end up with around about a foot of belly when we put the strainers on. It doesn't mean that you leave it coiled all over the ground, but it basically just means you let it fall to the ground before you tie your termination knot. Next up, you're going to want a set of strainers to do the job. Now, strainers come in a range of prices, and obviously the more you pay, the more you get. But your basic starting off set of strainers, you should be looking at around the $100 mark or higher. Because remember, this is a tool that's going to keep wire under tension and you don't want them to break. There are cheaper options like this $50 pair off the internet but the rivets are soft metal, poor quality and small and they're held together in critical points by simple mild steel bolts and lock nuts that can come undone and these slip really badly on the wire. So don't try and save 50 bucks and if you've got a pair of these Get rid of them, they're gonna hurt you. So what should we get? Well, we've got a set of strain rights here and there are also Hayes 108s. They're all around about the $100 mark these days and the new ones have a hook on one end so that you can strain directly to the post. For my money though, if you're doing fencing on a regular basis, it's worth spending a bit more, either with the fence line or the Wireman Australian made strainers. You get a lot more features and benefits, longer chains, better hooks, all sorts of advantages. Strainers come in at different prices, you get what you pay for. The more you pay, the better your fencing. Now that we've selected our good quality strainers and we're ready to start the job, lay the strainers out near one of the end posts. Don't ever strain right in the middle of the fence, strain near an end post, that way if anything ever goes wrong with the knot, it can easily be replaced using only a metre or so of wire. Insert the chain end first up against your end post. Make sure that the wire is firmly inserted in the strainers and bedded down properly before you leave them to go on with your job. Next, run your chain out by hand and connect the lever end of your chain strainers to the maul. Now with your strainers attached at the chain end, pull your wire up and attach it into the cam lock at the lever end. Now you're ready to start straining. A big advantage of good quality strainers is they walk themselves up the wire and it's very rare that you actually have to touch the malls as they're moving. Now the next part of straining wire is getting the tension right. Certainly you'll speak to a number of people whose technique for getting the tension right is to wind the strainers up as tight as they can go and when it really hurts that must be the right tension. But wire's a little bit more technical than that. To illustrate why you shouldn't go beyond the manufacturer's recommended strain tension on wire let's use this spring which is after all wire and this top rail to do a quick illustration of a point i've attached the spring to the end post and as you can see it's slack let's think of it as a game of thirds recommended strain tension is typically and it varies from manufacturer and wire to wire but it's typically one third of the breaking strain of the wire then we've got two thirds of the breaking strain of the wire. Something special happens here. Beyond this point, the wire stretches, but doesn't rebound. It stays stretched. So this is the maximum elastic capacity of the wire at two thirds of its breaking strain. And all the way over here, obviously should be where the wire breaks if you continue to put it under that amount of tension. So if I follow the manufacturer's recommendations, and strain my wire to the recommended tension and something happens like my 10 year old hits it hard with a motorbike or it gets run into by a bull 
extra strain is placed on the wire, but it snaps back and it doesn't lose any of its integrity. Let's say now I take the wire to two thirds of its braking strain. Now I've stretched that wire out to two thirds of its braking strain. The fence still looks fantastic, but what happens when a bull or that same 10 year old hits it with their motorbike and stretches it even further? What's happened now is that I've taken this fence beyond its elastic capacity and it's now permanently stretched. Meaning your fence is ruined, it's going to look slack and it's going to be a horrible job. So to optimise the strength of your fences and always get a good looking job, make sure you check the label for your manufacturer's recommended strain tension, use a strain gauge on your strainers and never go beyond it. Now that I've got my wire strained up to the correct tension, I want to use a knot that's going to allow me to tie that wire off and lose the least amount of tension to belly and things like that. So I'm using the speed knot, which I tie behind the strainers in the free section of wire. And that allows me to pull the wire really close and not work over the mechanism that's holding the wire together, which is better for safety. Now you'll notice that I've got a bit of a belly in the wire bit of slack wire here to work with that's a good thing sometimes people make the mistake of pulling the wire too tight around the end post and they don't have enough to work with I'm going to come past the lever mechanism of the strainers and I'm going to cut this with about a foot of spare wire at the lever end so this now leaves you with about half a foot to a foot of off cut of the wire either side of the cam lock on the lever section of your strainers and we're going to be tying the knot immediately behind this now to make things easier I'm putting some colored spaghetti tube over the top of the wire so that you can more easily see how I tie the knot the first time I'm then going to take this knot off and I'm going to retie a second knot without using the spaghetti wire so that you can see what the knot should look like when it takes up now let's start tying the knot now the first part of tying this knot is to just make a keyway in the main section of wire on the fence that you're straining. And you can see that I've made a simple little loop here. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to get the piece of wire that crosses over the top of the strainers that I've colored blue, and I'm going to put it through that hole I just made. And I want to pull this wire nice and tight so that it's not bowed out over the strainers. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the blue wire down a little bit to make a slight twist but I don't want to make a 90 degree bend it's more like about 30 degrees and then I'm going to make a crank handle I'm going to bend a 90 degree handle for myself here now this knot is really strong because it keeps the two loose piece of pieces of wire together first so I'm going to gently bring the blue over the red it's very important not to go over the tensioned wire first this blue wire here must go over the red wire first so you put the two ends over each other because they're the ones you want to twist and we're going to make a couple of twists around now as soon as I've gone over once I'm going to pull the red wire parallel to my strained fence and I'm going to go around that a couple of times with the wire from the strainers once I've gone over that a couple of times I can bring my red wire up or my main fence wire up and then I continue to go around a couple of more turns now to show you the next step I need to remove the spaghetti tube so that you can see what happens to the wire now because I've brought this wire around in a curve if I then twist my crank handle 90 degrees and spin the wire in that direction it'll break straight off the same again with this one if I bring that wire right down over the top of the strainers and then spin it around this way it'll break straight off and my knot is completely finished without even needing to use a pair of pliers now keeping our safety gear on and making sure that no one else is around the fence we can start to undo our strainers by forcing them a little bit further and letting them undo themselves they might need a little bit of a hand gripping the chain on their way back now you can see that this knot is holding even with the spaghetti tube over the top and it's because it's actually a compression knot it's not a tension knot and as this gains 
strain, it will actually close up even more. Let's demonstrate this without the spaghetti tube this time, a little bit faster, and I'll take you through the process and you'll see how easy it is to do. Okay, so let's tie this knot again, this time without the spaghetti line. We've got our two off cuts crossing over the point where we're going to be tying the knot. We're going to be tying the knot behind the strainers and we're going to be standing behind the strainers ourselves. So we're going to take our main off cut off our main section of fence and we're going to bend that over making a keyway. We're going to take the wire that covers the strainers and we're going to put that through the keyway Pull it nice and tight so that there's no bow over the strainers here. And then we're going to make a nice, say, 30 degree bend in that. And at the same time, make a crank handle to make twisting the wire easier for us. Now we're going to pull out from the strainers and bring this wire around this offcut here. You must go over the offcut first. Don't go over the strained wire first or your knot will break. All of the strength is in this section here. This is your compression joint that you're making. Now we start twisting around. Now because I've gone around the strained wire, I can now straighten this wire up and make my knot nice and taut and neat. I want to go around about twice. Then I'm going to bring this wire up out of the way and I'm going to make a few more twists just to finish the knot off on the main section of strained wire. Now we can break these dags off simply by twisting them in the opposite direction to which they've already been twisted. So you see that this wire has been twisted in that direction. If I then twist it 90 degrees to the initial twist, it breaks straight off. This wire here, and I'll just give myself a bit more of a leverage, this wire here has been twisted in that direction. So if I then twist it 90 degrees to that direction, it breaks straight off and my knot has no sharp edges and I don't need to use pliers. Now to release my strainers, all I need to do is go a little bit further than my last crank and the mauls will come off the chain very easily. I can then walk the mauls back down the chain and if you've got a good quality pair of strainers, you notice my hands didn't have to be too close to the chain. Now I've lost about a link of tension there. That's not too bad. And now all I have to do is remove the strainers. Now that we've removed the strainers from the knot, I want to show you something very special about this knot. The knot actually pulls together. It doesn't pull apart. And that's why the Donald knot, or speed knot as we call it up here, is one of the strongest knots you can use for straining a plain wire fence. I recommend you practice this because you never know when you'll have to fix a broken fence and you won't have one of those fancy, expensive fence joiners handy to do the job with. Guys, if you like this kind of content and you found this useful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more content like this and more on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.